How's it going, everybody? We are a one day away from possibly one of the funnest Halloween events in amateur radio, Hell Fest. And today I'm not only going to tell you about the event, but I'm going to show you how to set up your computer and radio to use Held Feld, an older mode of operation, but certainly very hipster, very cool in its niche-like characteristics. So let's take a look. Link is in the description, but go to hellfest.digital. Here you can find out more information on the event. It is a radio event that happens on Friday the 13th in October this year. Normally it is on the third weekend in October for one UTC day cycle. But it's special. This is uh, Friday the 13th, so we got to take advantage of that. The rules are pretty simple. You have to use Feld Hell, which is a mode of operation. Again, I will explain in a second. Uh, all your contests must be made within the amateur space. Bands that we use are 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. So none of the work bands. We are mainly using the primary HF amateur radio bands and there are some operating windows that are recommended there are some scoring multipliers as well but i'll leave that for you to decide really this is just kind of a fun event to use a mode that has kind of fallen out of favor although it is quirky enough that it probably deserves a little bit more of a mention our, our journey begins to make this whole thing work by doing a Google search for FL Digi. And if you go to W1HKJ Software, you will find this uh, lovely ham radio type website. If you scroll down here to FL Digi, F L A R Q, Flark. Uh, and if you go to download for Windows or numerous other um, options, go to FL Digi. Here you'll find. PDFs and tarballs and DMGs for Mac and all kinds of other stuff. But if you're on Windows, which is what I'm using today, you, you can use this on Mac if you want or Linux. But uh, the newest version came out recently in September. This is FLDigi 4.2.00. Go ahead and download the setup for that and save it off. Now, when you run this for the first time, I like to hit the Windows button on my keyboard, and then I type in FLDigi. You're probably going to be greeted once you hit Enter with a pop-up like this that says, uh, Assertion failed. I just hit Ignore, and then it just kind of works. And yes, that ticker tape-like printout of white noise that you see going there, that is Feld Hell that's being displayed. I'm going to reset up my call sign info and whatnot, so I'm going to hit update call sign info. Okay. Uh, call sign info is KI6NAZ. Yeah, type that in yourself and go ahead and hit close. Now you should have a fully functioning FL Digi display. FL Digi is a application that gives you access to a lot of the traditional modes of digital HF, the modes we kind of don't use as much anymore. This, In this case, Feld Hell. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on operator mode and you're going to go to hell and you're going to go to feld hell. And that's what I have selected there. And that'll start doing this whole thing that it's doing right now. Now, with that said, you really should have a radio connected to this whole thing, right? Well, that's what the next step is. You're going to go up to configure and you're going to go up to configure dialog and you will get a window like this little pop up here. Now, under here, you're going to get rig control, and, and this is going to take some people back who've done this in the past, but we don't have to do much of this anymore. Things have gotten progressively better, but there used to be a couple of different options for how we would get onto digital HF or just digital control of radios. Nowadays, we all generally use Hamlib. Hamlib is going to have pre-configured files for multiple radios that you may be running. In my case, I'm running an ICOM 7610. I have the COM device set as COM8 because that is the port that's displayed on my device manager when I run that from the background here. Device manager, which everybody should be familiar with, right? If you watch my other videos, device manager is your friend, your best friend when it comes to uh, most HF radio communication. You can see I have actual two uh, USB ports, but you usually go with the lower numbered one, at least for ICOMs, and I have that selected. You can copy this screenshot if you want. This is how I communicate with my radio, but all of these retries and timeouts and baud rates are going to vary for your own radio. You'll likely have to consult your little radio menus to determine which baud rate you should be using. Polling intervals, 250, all of this stuff, again, you have to tweak, but you, you could get lucky and this will work. Those of you with ICOM radios, this will probably work okay. The most you'll have to do is mess around with the baud rate. I've seen some people having to go as low as 9600, 19200, 38400. Those are generally going to work okay. And then you hit save. Now, just as a, 
as an FYI, the save is just going to save your, your settings. It's not going to close that window. You've got to hit the close button if you want to do that. We now have computer control sorted out, but that's half of the battle. The next thing we need is audio. We need the audio coming in from the radio, but the radio also needs the audio coming out of the computer. That's like your transmitted information. So click on sound card and click the little drop down. And if you go to devices, now here should be your computer's audio in and out USB connection. In my case, it is USB 6 audio codec. And that's going to be both for the microphone and the speaker. You may have different devices, although I have rarely ever, if ever, ever seen that. So just go with the one that goes with your microphone. Again, if you've done FT8 before, this should be a snap for you. It's just as a different UI. Go ahead and click save. And then you're ready to move on. But here is a hot tip. If you want to bump up all the fonts like I've done right here, let, let me show you how to do that. Every one of these subsections in colors and fonts, buttons and meters and function keys are going to have buttons that say like font and color. And if you then take the font and color and bump it up to say like 18, like I have here, it's going to look a lot more readable. Once you've figured out your whole GUI situation, which I had to mess around with mine a lot, you should start seeing your radio's frequency in the upper left-hand corner up here. In my case, mine is set to 10 meters. That's probably not going to work at this time of night, but just as an FYI, here's me rolling the VFO, and the application should be tracking the, the VFO of your radio without much difficulty. Let's switch over to like 40 meters, which is a much better band for nighttime. All right, here's my radio in the lower right-hand corner. Let's go to... Let's go to 40 meters. Maybe see some change. I'm going to change over to probably a frequency that's going to be a little bit better. Yeah, for just Feld. doing a Google search, there's a couple of options. There's an actual Feld Hell Club, which is kind of cool, like the Hellfire Club from uh, Stranger Things. But it's the Feld Hell Club. Maybe we get some leather jackets to run with that. I like that idea. Anyway, they've got a couple of frequencies worth mentioning. 40 meters, 7080 through 7090. That kind of matches what we generally do on uh, 20 meters anyway. So I'll probably just go with that now. So let's slide on over there with my radio go ahead and slide on down to 70 80 somewhere like that i don't see much action and i'll show you how to use this uh, application as well so let's go back to um, fl digi now important for all of you who never experienced digital modes outside of things like ft8 or jsa call they all just kind of like work when you call a call sign and you're within some kind of frequency space. It, it kind of sorts itself out and you don't have to do a lot of guesswork. Plus also there's a there's a defined frequency, which means you kind of just go, you say 20 meters. Yeah, go do 20 meters or 40 meters. Yeah, go do that. And it does it for you. These type of digital modes don't do that. They assume you kind of know what you're doing. They give you a lot more rain in what you have the capability of doing. So in this case, I'm on 7.084 megahertz, which you can see above my head here. And uh, let's just square it up a little bit. We'll go right on 84. Close enough. It, it doesn't really matter. Right above my head here, right next to me, see this little black bar? So the black bar is a breakdown in uh, kilohertz, basically, in all the activity that's going on. And if you see to my right, right there, that looks like Winlink, that blue, that little bit of blue. That actually looks like Winlink data that somebody's transmitting. And right next to that on the left, these little red lines, well, that's the sign of my, that's the size of my data transmission in width, in bandwidth, for what I'm about to do, which is send a CQ for Feld Hell. If you're in the mode of operation and you scroll to the top here, or you look to the top, there is an RSID CQ. And if you typed in your call sign at the beginning of this whole setup, all you have to do is hit the button RSID CQ, and it'll start transmitting CQ for you. It'll also give you a really interesting look at what Feld Hell looks like. So let's go ahead and click it, and we'll see what happens. So now it's populated CQ. After I hit that, I'm going to, there we go. It's transmitting now. CQ, CQ, DE, KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ, KI6NAZ. Notice what it's doing? The It's like a printout. It's literally like if we had ticker tape, you know, like back in the day of, of using a telegraph, you know, like old school. I don't know. What was that? Uh, the run on the bank. There's a run. It's a wonderful life, right? 
same kind of concept here. That's what it's doing. It's just this ticker tape printout. And that's what QSO exchanges look like. So when you start receiving a signal for someone on Feldhell, it will come in like this. There will be degradations to the signal, and you may not get a perfect copy, but that's what it's going to look like. So what does that mean from a logging standpoint? Well, pretty much anything. You can just log it as a pen and paper contact. You can log it with another logger. You can use FL Digi by typing in the call sign here at the top. I could say ki 6 NAZ, if you know, that was not me that I was making a contact with, and go through the whole gamut of different information, the operator, you can have a full uh, communication back and forth contact, my name, my operator name, their operator name, where are they located, what's their station like, and a lot of people would use this type of mode to actually have full like conversational discussions over amateur radio, so it's, it's pretty cool. Now, while I think macros are really cool, all these little buttons on the top of the display here, uh, you can always just type whatever you want in this lower section, and then you can just transmit it by hitting this T-R button that's on the right-hand side. So if I said uh, CQ, 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 uh, DE Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu, Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu, and yeah, you can correct it on the fly like that, and then hit TX, T-R, it'll transmit as you're seeing right now. And yeah, you can just do it freeform like that. You don't have to have all the macros and crazy stuff like that. You could treat this like uh, AOL Online or uh, what was that? AIM, AOL Instant Messenger back in the day. Now, note, note, I'm still transmitting. There's no more audio. It's all done. There's no more things to type. So you do have to go back in and hit the T-R button to then return back to receiving. And you can see now we've got that big white space and then now we're back to that static keep it so fyi you can do manual qso's if you want to and it's recommended so unfortunately no one replied to my cq so i'm going to do another one here let's go ahead and go up to the upper upper left right here and hit cq cq de ki6 naz cq de from d is from by the way ki6 naz now uh, notice there's a whole bunch of buttons up there. There is answer, QSO, KNSK. This is going to take a much longer deep dive if we wanted to learn the really cool features of macro buttons within FL Digi. Just keep in mind that what those icons mean is whether we're continuing the QSO, logging the QSO, advancing, skipping, all kinds of other things. So generally when we hit like answer, for instance, this is me replying to somebody um, that I have heard their QSO for. So that call, KI6NAZ, if it was somebody else's call, instead it would be that person's call from Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. So this is a reply to someone when they're making a contact or they're calling CQ. And then we can have a QSO button for literally logging a QSO once we have the pertinent information. There could be, you could make a macro button for telling more about your station. I'm on an ICOM 7610. Um, I'm using a three element step IR at my home in Cerritos, California, you know, that whole thing. So there's all kinds of really fun stuff you can do with the depths of this. And this works with all kinds of other modes psk 31 obviously felled hell right in here in this case but literally if you go to op mode and you just look at all these options above my head there are a ton so if you've not used fl digi before unfortunately there's not that many people that are doing these levels or these types of digital modes as there used to be back before ft8 that's what everybody did was one of these digital modes because the other modes you know there really wasn't else anything else going on in the digital space so there you go. So hey, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this little deep dive into Feld Hell was fun for you. I hope you're considering joining us on Hellfest, which is basically tomorrow as you're watching this. It's really not that difficult to set up. If you've set up FT8 WSJTX on your computer and your radio, you can do Feld Hell without any issue. And once you know how to do Feld Hell, that opens the door for doing things like RIDI, which is still a really cool mode, radio teletype, that has contests that still exist to this day that are, that are actually very passionate operators. Not, you know, not in that sense. They're actually very passionate for the mode of operation uh, that is radio teletype. So anyway, if you enjoyed this, I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and, and give me that thumbs up if this was helpful. And I hope to see you on Hellfest this year.